Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am diving into the crafty side of my channel, insert evil laugh here, um, to show you guys how to do some vinyl lettering onto a glass board that I am putting together. So I'm throwing a baby shower, super exciting, and my uh, friend that I'm throwing it for has a glass sign that she wants to um, have the word cookies put on, and I'll have little sugar cookies on little platform shelves that I've cut and glued to this board, so you'll see that in a second. So if you're interested in learning how to create vinyl lettering in Silhouette Studio for purposes of using the Cameo, then stay tuned. So this is the cookie board that we will be transferring the vinyl signage onto. The lettering is just going to go at the top and I've built little platforms on for each sugar cookie to be displayed. So hopefully it will turn out cute in the end. So let's dive into how to create the vinyl decal and how to cut it and place it. Okay, so I am here in my Silhouette Studio to go ahead and cut out the cookie sign for my cookie board out of vinyl. And so I am using version 4.2 of Silhouette Studio. I have the Cameo 3 and that's the current version that I'm on at this point. Um, so first of all, I don't really like to see the grid on my work surface. I don't know why, but it just kind of distracts me and I don't really need to see all the little squares and where they fall because I'm doing something that's going to be large. So I don't really need to kind of worry about exactly where on the grid my design is going to fall. So I'm going to press function G to get rid of the grid. And you can also go to the top um, menu here under view and show or hide the grid here. So I've done that. Um, so first I'm going to go to my text panel. So on the left hand side there's different options for different things, lines and boxes and, and uh, eraser tool and all kinds of stuff. But I use the text box tool and just kind of click anywhere on the screen. And what I'm going to do is just do the word that I want. And so I want it to say cookies. So I'm going to go ahead and spell that out. And it starts out in a very plain font. And so of course I'm going to want to click on that and do like a more fancy script. And so once you click on the text bar, it allows you to um, modify a lot of stuff here at the top. And so I'm gonna first do um, a font that I like. And I've used some, I have a lot of different specialty fonts kind of preloaded and I've used some um, in the project already that I like. And so people who know me know my favorite font at this point is uh, Ottoman November. And so I'm gonna use Ottoman November font. And this, uh, it's just so cute. I don't know, I like it. I don't know, I can't describe my love for it. My sister doesn't like it, but I like it. So uh, at this point, you can go ahead and make it bigger. You can make it smaller, whatever you need to do. I know that um, from measuring my board, it needs to be almost 12 inches, and that's the width of this entire page. So I'm gonna make it kind of as big as I can and still keep it within these red boundaries. So I need to keep it pretty big, but also still stay within the boundary. And so I'm just gonna kind of um, make it you know, as big as possible. And that leaves me with a width of 12 inches roughly, just a little shy of 12 inches. And then it also tells me how uh, high my design is too. So this says it's 4.636 inches high, which is about right. Um, it's a little bit uh, high maybe for what I'm looking for. I think I wanted to keep it within four inches, but if you notice the box is counting from like way down here and my design doesn't really start until like here. So I think it will be within the correct dimensions that I want. So now that I have my design all in here and it looks good, uh, the next thing I need to do is to weld it. And that's the feature that they call in Silhouette Studio where um, you get rid of these overlapping lines because if I were to cut this design as is, all the little red lines would cut. And so they, the C would cut into the O and the O would cut into the other O and so on. And so the designs would all be cut individually and all these little letters would come away and it wouldn't be one piece. And so I want to make it flattened so it's one piece. So if you click on it, at the top there's a little shortcut here at the top and it just says weld selected shapes. Um, and so if you click that, you will notice that all of a sudden it makes it one continuous design and there aren't separate designs that cut into each other anymore. And so this is perfect. I like how this is. It's a very simple, um, clean, easy um, way to do this. I don't need to do anything else with it. So I am ready to send it to the cutter. And so I'm gonna go ahead and send it to the Cameo and that's at the top here under the send button. And when I send it, um, I'm on tool one, which is the cutting tool. I use tool two, two for other things like sketch pens. 
Um, and so when I, of course it says unavailable now because I'm not actually connected to it yet, but um, at this point I am going to go ahead and um, choose my material. And so last time I was cutting, I was cutting cardstock and I just, you always have to remember to reset the material um, to what you need to be cutting because I've done that before and it's so irritating to have this cut out and it's not on the right setting and it doesn't work. You have to throw it away, start over. Um, so the material, of course, that I want to use today is a vinyl, and so you'll find that all the way at the bottom, they've got a lot of great uh, materials preloaded into the menu, and what I'm using here is today is a matte vinyl. And so I'm just going to use the settings for a matte vinyl, and because I have the Cameo 3, it is an auto blade, um, so it automatically will adjust to the right uh, cut settings for me, and I don't need to adjust my blade uh, manually, so that's really a nice feature. And at this point, I don't think I need to do anything else to it, and I will be ready to go ahead and hit send once I hook up my machine. All right, so I am here in my craft room now with my Silhouette Cameo, and I have the Cameo 3, which I love. I had the Cameo 2, and I thought it was great as well, but this one has really upgraded some things with um, adding the auto blade and the ability to do two tools, two cut tools instead of one, and also the extra storage. So this little tray pops out, and it's really cool because it's got some storage space here for my cut and weeding tools, and the Cameo 2 didn't have that. So definitely an improvement. I really like this machine and I use it all the time. Um, so I have hooked up my laptop to this uh, machine and I am here actually with a Cricut mat and this is a perfect mat because it's a little bit dirty and if you have a Cricut or a Silhouette you'll know that like just the perfect little um, mat is not going to be super sticky. It's going to be a little bit dirty um, and not uh, grab too much on your material. So I have the perfectly dirty mat here which is great for cutting. And I've got my auto blade set up here, and then I went ahead and um, updated my settings in the design file because I actually realized that I have a glossy vinyl and I had set it for a matte vinyl. So I just went ahead and updated it to reflect that it's a glossy vinyl. And I am using a Cricut vinyl today. It is the Cricut Permanent Premium Vinyl. Looks like that on the back, so you can kind of cut it nice and straight. I like the little grid lines. Um, sometimes I'll use Oracal, which I think you can buy from Michaels, but I usually get it from Amazon because I'm lazy and I don't like to go out and do errands if I can have it delivered to my doorstep. So I buy it from um, Amazon typically, but uh, you can buy it from Michaels and this you can buy from um, Joanne Michaels or Amazon as well. So all I have to do is just sort of lay it out and it's already like the perfect width to what I need it for. So I'm just going to run that down um, uh, down the page just a few inches and the grid does help me kind of measure what a few inches is. Um, I don't mind if there's a little bit extra here. So it's one, two, three, four, five. And um, I'll just do a little extra just in case and I'll just use the scissors to uh, cut the excess vinyl off the roll. Okay, now that I've got my vinyl on the mat and it looks like it's stuck pretty well, I'm going to go ahead and load it to my machine and hit the load button. Now that it's loaded, I'm just going to comb over to my computer and hit send. And now it does its magic. So this is the auto blade adjusting itself to the right cut settings. Uh, it first cycles itself back to zero, and then it will select the right thickness um, or the right blade depth depending on your material thickness. And this should be a pretty quick cut design. Now that our design is cut, it is time to start weeding. So I will switch to a different view and then we'll start weed. All right. Okay, so time to weed. And you can see that it's cut out here. I just shone a light on it so you can see a little bit easier that it does say the word cookies if you kind of see it in the light reflection. And all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take my favorite tool, which is actually this little pair of um, Pro Tools, I think it's called, yeah, Pro Tools. Um, really super fine tweezers are super sharp. So I love this though for just the purpose of weeding. And so if you can get a corner started, that's what you, I usually start to, to do. Um, just kind of get a corner going and start to weed it up. And um, sometimes I will weed the background first like this and sometimes I'll uh, weed differently and just kind of weed the inside. But this looks like it's coming away pretty well. And as I'm pulling, uh, it's starting to come away, which is great. 
and I'll just kind of go slowly and make sure I don't, um, you know, rip away part of the wording. And so this looks like it's going to be pretty smooth and you can kind of help it along, make sure it doesn't uh, rip off anything. And that's perfect. So then we'll just discard this vinyl and throw that away. And now we are left with our sign with the exception of just a couple things that we have to weed out of the center, like these, um, anything that has loops and curls and, you know, like um, little pieces that have a middle to them. So I will just grab and pull those and stick those off to the side. I'll get this back in frame for y'all. There we go. Basically just looking to grab any little piece and just uh, stick it off to the side there. So I'm going to grab the little bit that's in this K and some people weed on the back of their hand, but I don't really like to do that. I'm not sure why I'm just different. I don't know what I, I just don't like it on the back of my hand. All the stickers, it's not convenient. I just put it on the vinyl, the backing. All right. And then last but not least, the little piece there and we are good to go okay so then just take all the little pieces that you've weeded off and you can throw those in the trash and now we have our cookies sign ready to be transferred to a transfer tape and so the goal here is to take and um, put a transfer tape on top of this and then uh, lift it off of the backing and then apply it to our surface so i'm going to go ahead and grab my backing I'm just using a clear roll of transfer tape. I don't use an expensive brand. Um, I don't think you need an expensive brand and sometimes the really expensive brands are like super sticky and they are too sticky and they take half your design with it. So this is perfect for what I need. Um, it's just like a little translucent film and that's what I use. So I will take a piece of this and it also comes in a 12 inch width so I know that it covers the width of what I'm doing. Um, and I'll go ahead and just give it a cut and we will apply it to our design. All right, so now that I've got that up there, I will go ahead and place it onto my design. This is probably a bigger piece than I needed, but it's better to have too big than not big enough. And it doesn't matter if this necessarily goes on straight. In fact, it can have air bubbles or whatever. That's okay. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is reach over and grab my burnishing tool. And that is just this little piece that comes with the machine. And it's like a nice little plastic scraper. And I'm just going to scrape out the air bubbles from my transfer tape. And then after that, I will be able to start putting it on our board. So here I have our decal and I've got my cookie sign and I'd like to go ahead and place my decal right at the top here. Um, so this is going to be fairly easy one to do. I kind of started out with an easy example. Um, just to grab a corner of your transfer tape and make sure that your design is coming up on the tape. And now this one shows that mine is not. It's supposed to be this little corner here is supposed to be on the transfer tape and it's not really transferring very well. And if that happens, just go ahead and take your burnishing tool and press it into the, um, the side here. Just make sure that it's really sticking to that transfer tape and then um, keep doing that until it lifts. And this time it did lift. You should see it come onto the clear piece. And usually once you get a corner started, the rest of it will follow. And so now, without touching the vinyl, of course, um, just go ahead and slowly peel back the backing and make sure that it all transfers to the tape. Now you can set your backing off to the side and now it is ready to transfer. Actually it's backwards for me but it looks like it's right for you because I have my phone in the reverse um, reverse image. So I will go ahead and flip this around and then I'm going to look for optimal placement making sure it's in the middle. And so I'm just going to kind of step back a little bit and make sure that I get this right in the middle before I place it. Also making sure that it's level and not crooked and that it is in the middle. Okay. Now that I've got it placed and it's where I like it, I will go ahead and take this burnishing tool and um, just run it over the design, making sure I scrape it down really well and adhering it to the board. And I did actually clean the board beforehand so that it would stick extra well. I've taken you guys up and over the design so you can kind of see a little up close just a little bit better as I'm going through it. And making sure that it's really scrubbed in there and adhered to it. And then after that, I'm going to go ahead and just peel off this transfer tape and make sure my design doesn't come with it because that will be bad. And then we will be done. Sometimes the design comes up with it and that is not a good time for anybody.
All right, yay, it is all done. I'm gonna go ahead and stand this back up and we will see how it looks. And there she is. It is looking so good. It's exactly what I wanted. I left a little bit of space underneath the decal so that when the cookies get placed there, um, it'll take up this space and it won't, um, you know, block the words. So there is a little bit of space underneath there on purpose because I did want to leave space for the sugar cookies. Oh, there's my toes. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, this is the final product and I'll be sure to snap a picture of the cookies on the board once they are placed there for the shower. Hopefully you liked the tutorial. Let me know if you have any questions, if you're interested in buying a Silhouette Cameo and what the differences are between Cricut and Silhouette brands, let me know and I'd be happy to share my thoughts with you. Um, if you like this video, please hit subscribe and I will see you guys next time. Thanks guys.